Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chris, and this is Model Airplane Maker. And today we're going to do a tour of the Canadian Aviation and Space Museum in Ottawa, Ontario. And we're going to talk about inspiration, because this is where I like to go and get some. Whether I'm looking at the airplanes on exhibit or at the absolutely fantastic scratch built models that they have in their collection. I really enjoy coming here to find some inspiration to build my own scale models. Where do we get inspiration? For me, it comes from many different places, model shows, history books, documentaries, and then there's aviation museums, and I've been to quite a few of them. It doesn't matter if I've seen the collection before, I always do the walk around and do the pictures, and I always learn something new or rediscover something that I used to know. With me on my visit today is my trusty intern. She loves going to this museum, and I'll get to why in a minute. I really like taking her because I get to experience the museum from a different perspective, and sometimes I get stumped on a good question. But no matter what, I always get inspired. The inspiration may be to build one of the planes in the museum. I'm thinking of that Sabre 6. Or to do some further research on a given airplane, pilot, theater of war. Or maybe take my building to the next level and attempt a pure museum scratch build. It's been this way ever since I visited this museum with my dad back when I was just old enough to wonder how those big airplanes could get up in the sky. Back then, the collection was held in two or three ramshackle hangars on the former Rockliffe Air Base. I do not remember a lot from those visits, except I always look forward to going with my dad and being up on his shoulders. I also remember how cold it was in those hangars in the winter and how intimidating that big black bomber looked. At some point in the 80s, the collection was moved over to these new buildings and they feature excellent climate control and actual space between the airplanes. The collection is divided in what could be described as islands containing similar aircraft from a specific era. And generally speaking, each era has some Canadian oriented significance. So there's the Great War, Bush planes, early passenger airplanes, World War II featuring significant aircrew trainers, and then Cold War airplanes. The intern really likes the open areas where she can stretch her legs in the winter. She loves the kids' activity room and the many interactive exhibits, as well as the sit-in cockpits, especially that Cessna with the ATC radio air playing. Unfortunately, all of those were closed on this visit due to a worldwide health problem that we all know about. And to manage that risk, the staff created a linear path to follow to ensure there's limited exposure to other visitors. So there's no rush to complete the circuit, but you simply can't backtrack. And as you can see in these shots, there were not many visitors at this trip. Um, I ran into an excellent supervisor named Mario who helped us out and went out of his way to make us feel welcome and comfortable. He was also super nice to the little intern with all her questions. We chatted about the museum situation for a bit. While he wished the museum could open up a little more, He's glad that at least some can come and visit. We were just glad to go, although there was a little disappointment we couldn't sit together in the Cessna. As we're finishing up the tour of the World War II area of the main museum, I'm remembering there is a big part of the collection that is in the reserve hangar. And off the top of my head, I know they have a, another Spitfire, a Mustang, Mosquito, Sea Fury, Kitty Hawk, and a pile of other planes in there. Unfortunately, the museum has suspended tours of that hangar for the time being, but I hope they resume at some point soon. Now we're sweeping through the Cold War section of the museum. It has the vampire, the hornet, and everything in between. It's all in there. This section contains a wide variety of fighters and helicopters, experimental airplanes as well. And it also seems to have the best lighting in the museum, so you can really appreciate the aircraft. The shiny Starfighter is interesting because it was modified for a record flight attempt and the museum kept all the modifications. However, my favorite is that Sabre and it's in my build pile. 
although it's not shiny like the earlier variants or the Korean War veterans, it has a subtle camouflage pattern and a cool Cobra on the rudder. I was lucky enough to find the right decals and some resin bits to make that particular airplane. I could spend hours in this museum. I really enjoy my visits here. If I were to suggest any sort of improvements, well, I'd love to see some Corsairs be brought into the collection. That would really make my day. And some parts of the museum have low lighting. I don't know why, but it makes taking pictures of certain aircraft a little bit difficult. And also, it's unfortunate that a good chunk of the collection is stored in another building where you would normally have to get another admission to go and see them. But right now, I believe that building is closed. And it's a great collection over there, including all of the naval airplanes that Canada used, as well as just a ton of other things that are extremely interesting, but they just don't have enough room in the main exhibit hall to show them. Of course, no trip to the Air Museum is complete without a quick sweep through the gift shop, which is very well equipped with posters, gifts, books, models, clothing, pins, stickers, you name it. If it's aviation related, they probably have it. The last things I'd like to highlight at this museum are the many scale models, scratch-built scale models that are on display throughout the museum. These are everything from airplanes to ships, cutaway models, um, even space models. And as someone who builds primarily from kits, I can't tell you how impressed I am with the skill and the ability of someone who scratch builds these types of models to this level of perfection. The racing float plane and the impressively huge airship model were made by two English model making companies. And in the space section, the Soyuz and the incredibly large space station models were made by the CSA. But my favorites have got to be the cutaway Harvard and Anson models. These were made by a very skilled modeler named Jack Constant. Well, that about wraps it up. If you like this video and you think others might too, please like and subscribe. And otherwise, my tr very trusty intern says goodbye until next time.